welcome, welcome, welcome. It is time for the Legal Lounge here on CRN Digital Talk Radio, CRNTalk.com, streaming live coast to coast and around the world on CRN Digital Talk Radio, also available on Amazon Echo, anywhere you can find us. We are there, C-Crane Radio, TuneIn Radio, Facebook.com slash CRN Talk. I'm joined by a legal expert, practicing attorney, noted author of America, an Illusion of Freedom, Amateur Congo player, Corvette aficionado, and veteran, Mr. Richard Nixon. Sir, how are you? I'm here, and I'm echoing what Mark Levin said the other day, and that is, Mr. President, there's tens of millions of guys behind you. Hang in there. Stick around for the end of the show. We're going to have a nice, Richard's going to offer his brilliant commentary about what's going on in the news and a, a message to President Trump as well as all of his supporters, which I think you'll be interested in staying tuned for. But we have a big show today. We're going to be talking about all things Mueller, all things obstruction. And uh, interesting, we have a, a, a fascinating uh, article from the Boston Globe that Professor Alan Dershowitz, a legal scholar, wrote about obstruction, saying that Democrats cool your jets. So we're going to be talking about about a case that's being adjudicated as we speak regarding census questions. We're going to be talking about Cuba, which is an issue close to both of our hearts. But we're going to open things up with uh, one Mr. Bernard Sanders, socialist, state of Vermont. He was uh, asked at a town hall today about criminal justice reform, and he said, quote, everybody everybody should be able to vote including not you know not just uh, you know felons post sentence but felons in custody so <laughs> yeah. much to say even the boston bomber richard give us your take on this constitutionally and ethically well again actually what's interesting is uh he's entitled to have that opinion and in fact the 15th amendment we talked about off the air mike basically says that uh the right of citizens of the united states to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude, which means basically the federal government, Congress, and the states can basically write any law they want to limit those citizens who can vote as long as they don't consider the person's race color or previous condition of slavery, if you will. Mm -hmm. that, that comes out of the, the 13th, 14th, and, and so 12th, 13th, 14th Amendments. 15th Amendment, yes. 15th Amendments, then codified that. But so, yes, it, 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 Congress does have the ability to dictate, and states do as well, Yes, who can vote and who can't vote. Exactly. So long as it's not discriminatory. Right. Is that good policy, though? Well, again, uh, we had talked also about the fact that there are some fairly rural areas where the, if you will, the prison is probably the largest population within that district or county, if you will, and you'd have basically the people incarcerated <laughs> making the law for the rest of the city, if you will. That's exactly right. So this is what's going to happen. So that the, uh, the the Alcatraz of the Rockies, the Florence ADX of federal prison in Colorado, is in a very, very rural place. So what they can happen is they can just, you know, vote in one of their own and then yes. create policies saying, hey, we get steak dinners, we get girls, we get drinks, we get all that. So, yeah, I don't know, Mr. Sanders, about your candidacy and that policy. But we're going to be back right after the break here in the Legal Lounge. Richard Nixon live here on CRN Digital Talk Radio, crntalk.com. Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash CRN Talk. Also, make sure to follow Richard at Twitter, at Richard A. Nixon. We'll be right back right after the break. Stay with us. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now, 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy, and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now, 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. And 
we are back here in the Legal Lounge. Richard Nixon Live, CRN Digital Talk Radio, crntalk.com, facebook.com slash crntalk, talking all things legal, all things constitutional, with Mr. Richard Nixon. And just to follow up what we talked about before the break, Richard, why do you think that uh, one Bernard Sanders, socialist Vermont, is seeking to enfranchise all these felons that are still in custody? Well, I think, quite frankly, this is simply an act of desperation. I think Democrats literally are running out of undocumented Democrats to vote. They've, they've thought of the 16-year-olds, and now they're talking about felons. Uh, quite seriously, I believe once Trump shuts down the southern border, they will literally will run out of Democrats. And this is a, a desperate attempt to bolster the numbers of Democrats and I think it's doomed to fail as well. It seems like there's a lot of that going on on the Democratic side right now, be it, be it guaranteeing free college tuition, be it ah, yes. guaranteeing a universal basic income. It seems like there's a lot of pie-in-the-sky ideas well, that really have no basis in, in, in well, rational fact. You know, it's very interesting because uh, Mrs. Uh, Pocahontas, as the president calls her, she's the one now saying free college education and we're going to forgive the loans and there's a certain select very rich people that are going to be pigeonholed to pay for this. Now, w w several people have wondered why we don't apply the concept of equal protection to taxpayers. In mm. other words, why is it fair for the government to select a group of people within our citizenship, within our taxpayers, and tax them more than others when that money is literally taken from one group of people, the wealthy, if you will, and given to other people to pay their debts? It's a backdoor redistribution of wealth. Absolutely. And the, my point is, we, we've misused equal protection in several instances. It's, it's, it's a backup argument for gay marriage, frankly. Gay marriage was bolstered by the idea of liberty and also equal protection. Why shouldn't a person be able to marry someone of the same sex? Treat me the same as you treat heterosexuals. So anyway, um, they haven't gone that far on equal protection, but I could see uh, an argument there saying b basically you have to stop selecting certain groups uh, select them to tax them more than others. I agree I absolutely agree that's uh, interesting we'll be following this story moving forward but the big news uh, this week and over the weekend of course was the uh, release of the redacted heavily redacted uh, Mueller reports uh, where uh, Attorney General William Barr concluded uh, that what we've talked about in the show before, no, con no, uh, no collusion, uh, as the president say, no collusion. And uh, he still uh, left a little bit uh, nebulous about obstruction of justice, even though uh, Attorney General William Barr said that there, he found no reason to move forward with any sort of charges regarding uh, obstruction of justice. And first off, let's get our listeners, the layman, uh, Richard, what is obstruction of justice? Well, obstruction of justice basically is some type of... Uh, material interference with a an investigation uh, some would argue that this Mueller thing was not really an investigation because an investigation assumes that you're embarked on this project to learn something uh, many many people have said that 10 minutes after Mueller started this investigation he knew there was no there 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 was nothing to investigate uh, so what he should have done very shortly thereafter is to shut it down and say there's been no collusion, there's been no obstruction, because there's been no uh, connection between the Russians and the president. Uh, in general, collusion and conspiracy require an agreement, whether that agreement be uh, in writing or in, by implication. There was no agreement. The, the uh, Mueller investigation found no agreement, and of course, not having found the agreement initially should have been enough to, to shut the investigation down uh, within weeks of when it started. Well, there, there's two uh, two forks in the road that I want to go down here. First of all, let's tackle the first one about obstruction of an investigation. I'm failing to see the logic here because Mueller conducted an investigation. Yes. He finished the investigation, and and concluded his results. Right. So how is there obstruction if, there's complete, if the investigation was completed? Exactly. And, of course, that's, again, obstruction, if we look at it as simply uh, interference, no matter what Trump did, if Trump had said, for instance, I want to fire this guy, uh, figure out a way where I can do it, if, in fact, he didn't fire him, or if, in fact, he did fire him, but it did not 
result in any kind of hindrance to the investigation going forward, and it's clear that uh, Mueller was not interfered with, uh, by definition, there can have been no obstruction. But what's happened is people like Representative Adam Schiff, uh, who said that he sees a concept called attempted interference. The fact that uh, Trump Jr. took a meeting with the Russians, one person will say that was because they were talking about adopting kids from Russia. Others will say it was uh, for, be, regarding dirt on Mrs. Clinton. In any event, taking a meeting with the Russians without some kind of an agreement does not rise to the level of conspiracy or um, uh, commun you know, community agreements. So unless there was an, an agreement between the parties, there can have been no um, uh, obstruction and there can have been no attempted interference. Well, a lot of my brothers and sisters on the left have been screaming obstruction ever since the get-go regarding the, yes. the firing of James Comey. Right. But uh, Professor Der Dershowitz, friend of the show, I mean, he wrote a fascinating op-ed in the Boston Globe, I recommend all read it, about uh, the, pre the all staff members serve at the pleasure of the president, and the president has a constitutional duty to hire and fire department heads. And so uh, Mr. Dershowitz's point is that there can be no obstruction over the firing of just of of James Comey because he was fulfilling his constitutional duties as president. Absolutely right. And again, what the left likes to do, at least against this president, is to show what his motives were. It doesn't matter what his motives were, and, and Professor Dershowitz says this as well, namely that since the Constitution authorizes the president to hire and fire these people, he can hire and fire these people for any reason or for no reason. Now. He contrasts that with what Nixon did during the Watergate situation, where he literally took money uh, that was contributed for, for his campaign, used that money to pay off certain people. That's clearly not authorized by the Constitution. We're not talking about firing people. We're talking about using money improperly. So there is no connection between what Nixon did and what Trump did. Trump, had he chose to, could have fired Mueller and as long as that did not result in any kind of interference with the investigation, and it's clear it did not, there can have been no obstruction and there was no conspiracy. And there's actually, a, uh, due to our crack research team, we've actually uncovered a similar situation that happened in the, uh, the Bush the Elder, George Herbert Walker Bush administration, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, firing certain people or partnering people, constitutional duties that the president has regarding uh, very analogous to this case too and I want to get into that right after the, the break and it has a lot to do with thought crime uh, a, a, a theory that I think that uh, attorney uh, that excuse me that the special counsel Mueller wants to indict the president on crimes of the mind rather than actual crimes of the statute and so we're going to talk about that right after the break we're in the legal lounge on CRN Digital Talk Radio CRNTalk.com streaming live coast to coast and around the world also available on Facebook.com slash CRN Talk as well as on Amazon Alexa and Amazon Echo make sure to check out Richard's website www.pres37th.wx.com slash America you can order his fantastic book America and Illusion of Freedom also available on Amazon.com barnesandnoble.com as well as iTunes. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Were you scammed into signing a timeshare contract? And did you miss the part that said you have to pay for your great idea? Not only for the rest of your life, but when you're not here anymore, you get to pass this turkey onto your family for them to pay for the rest of their lives. Thanks, Dad. Don't burden your family down the road, and don't be stuck with expensive timeshare payments forever. Get out of your bad idea, timeshare contract guaranteed, or pay nothing. Call Resort Release today and learn for free how their timeshare exit team can help you legally exit your timeshare contract. They've helped thousands of people and they're A plus rated with a BBB. So if you feel scammed, get mad and get out of your expensive timeshare contract right now, guaranteed. Call N-O-W. 800-716-9903. 800-716-9903. 800-716-9903. Thank you. 
That's 800-716-9903. You're experiencing pain, back pain, shoulder, elbow, or hand pain, pain from a sports injury. If so, schedule a visit with Dr. Michael Sheps, the leading expert in laser therapy for pain management. Call 310-873-4422 or go to drsheps.com. Experience Epic T, the breakthrough laser therapy system that Dr. Sheps developed to make you pain-free in less time. Laser therapy is a non-invasive, safe, and effective office procedure that penetrates deep into your skin without damaging the tissue. It perfectly targets areas of pain to promote fast, natural healing. Relax your muscles, ease muscle spasms, joint stiffness, and arthritis pain while increasing blood circulation. For over 25 years, Dr. Sheps has helped Olympic athletes and sports enthusiasts alike get back in the game. Schedule your visit with Dr. Sheps at his Brentwood office in California. Call 310-873-4422 or visit drsheps.com. That's D-R-S-H-E ps.com 3108734422 These days here in Los Angeles the cutting edge is the edge we all want to be on and if you want cutting edge Mexican food go to the Mercado chain Mercado Mercado Taqueria Maradentro and Extra in downtown Los Angeles it's both classics and it's also a new wave of dishes things you've never tasted before plus great amazing cocktails they do wonderful things with tequila and with mezcal at Mercado Mercado Taqueria Maradentro and extra, the best Mexican food in the new wave. Come to RegenerativeMedicalAssociates.com and visit our online store. You'll find products to help with orthopedics, podiatry, aesthetics, and so much more. Our facility is FDA inspected with approved treatment for the United States Veterans Association. Visit our website at www.RegenerativeMedicalAssociates.com. That's Regenerative, R-E-G-E-N-E-R-A-T-I-V-E, MedicalAssociates.com. And we are back. Richard Nixon live here. CRN Digital Talk Radio, CRNTalk.com, talking all things legal, all things constitutional, and Mr. Richard Nixon. Talking about Mueller, talking about obstruction. And this is what I was talking about before the break about thought police, about a thought crime. This is often talked about in uh, legal circles as well as philosophical circles. How can we, can we try? Can we convict somebody? Can we condemn somebody based on the content of their thought? And how do we know what those thoughts consist of? And this is what I think is a fundamental issue when it comes to obstruction uh, vis-a-vis Donald Trump and the firing of James Comey. That's his constitutional duty to, to hire and fire cabinet uh, heads, department officials. The Mueller, I, I think he doesn't say it implicitly or explicit, excuse me, he doesn't say it explicitly, but I think he implies it in his report is that he felt that Donald Trump had some sort of criminal intent in his mind yes. when he fired James Comey. But that, uh, Mr. Dersh- Dershowitz says that sets a dangerous precedent on trying to extrapolate meaning from the mind of somebody vis-a-vis uh, exactly. their actions. What, what's, what's your thought on that? Well, again, the, the, the Ninth Circuit and the left has used this many times. They used it in the travel ban situation where they, even though President Obama had uh, set up the same restrictions on these six countries in the Middle East. Um, when President Trump did it, they said it was because of animus against Muslims mm-hmm. and said, therefore, it was not constitutional. Well, of course, that's nonsense. Uh, the president has an unfettered discretion to do what the Constitution authorizes him to do, in whether that that be pardoning someone, firing, or hiding someone, and that should be the end of it. Mm-hmm. And it's that's what I believe it. Uh, Attorney General William Barr. I mean, he, he he really separates himself from Mueller because Mueller believes that the application of the obstruction of justice statute to a constitutionally authorized presidential act would be permissible if the act was motivated by a corrupt purpose. Well, William Barr believes that the Constitution does not permit a prosecutor to probe the motives of a president if the act itself is authorized by the Constitution. And we saw this uh, about 20, 25 years ago when 
uh, President George Herbert Walker Bush, he pardoned Casper Weinberger and five others involved in the Iran-Contra scandal on the eve of Weinberger's trial. And the prosecutor in that case, uh, Lawrence Wells, she concluded that Bush had an improper motive in issuing those pardons, but he could not, he said legally he could not charge the president for obstruction of justice, in this case, President George Herbert Walker Bush, because he thought he, yes. can't, he can't judge somebody's intentions just based solely on what he thinks. It's like a yes. shot in the dark. There isn't any evidence to subject, suggest that there was corrupt motives in place. Yes. And again, I, would, I tend to side with Professor Dershowitz, not because he and I agree on this issue, but because he is no right winger. He is clearly a very, very left winger. Yeah. He's a brilliant man. There's no question about it. And so many of these opinions issued by different talking heads on TV and radio are motivated by, uh, by politics. Yeah. I think that when you have someone like Dershowitz, who is, if you will, going against his liberal friends, so to speak, uh, and speaking what he thinks is the truth, the, the true interpretation of the Constitution, I have to go with that opinion. And his opinion, his motive is simply irrelevant. If, if the president, if the Constitution grants power A to the president, he can do it unfettered, and that should be the end of it. And if the logic continues around the same line, I mean, why, how do we know that when uh, Adam Schiff met with Russians in a official capacity, he didn't have corrupt practices in his mind as well? Absolutely. And when Adam Schiff d defined uh, Trump Jr., I should say Donald Jr., is taking a meeting with the Russians for one reason or another, he called that uh, attempted uh, conspiracy, uh, attempted collusion. And ignored the fact that on, in April of 2017, Adam Schiff took a meeting with the Russians. And the, the purpose of this meeting was to uh, privy Adam Schiff and his people to apparently nude photos of, of Mr. Trump. Mm -hmm. And Adam Schiff actually asked him if Vladi, uh, getting very familiar with Mr. Putin, has seen the pictures and the Russians said yes he had. So uh, Adam Schiff was interested in, in taking a meeting with the Russians, but one would never call that attempted collusion, or would they? Oh, it's, it's, I guess it's, it depends where you stand on, yes. on, on what side of the aisle you stand in. Right Absolutely. Now. So there you go. We're going to be right back right after the break here. Richard Nixon Live on CRN Digital Talk Radio, crntalk.com. And like I said, make sure to follow Richard on Twitter, at Richard A. Nixon. You can also visit his website, www.pres37th.wx.com slash America, or just Google Richard Nixon, America, an illusion of freedom. You can take it right to your website or right to Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, or iTunes. Make sure to check it out. It's fantastic. And any vets out there, any of you guys served in the military with Richard, uh, stateside or in-country in Vietnam during his time as a contractor, please give us a call at the office, 818-818-6400, uh, or shoot Richard an email, richardnixon at crntalk.com. We love to connect vets here on the show, and we will provide you a free copy of Richard's book. Stay with us here in the Legal Lounge. Thank Richard you for Nixon that. Live. Yes. When you really want Italian food, you've got to get to Columbo's. Columbo's Italian Steakhouse and Jazz Club. Colorado Boulevard, Eagle Rock. It's that little neighborhood place you wish was down the street from you. It's time to leave the cocoon. No more rain and cold weather. Enjoy the deliciousness of Columbo's. It's not just the delightful and tender steaks, the to-die-for fish specialties. Columbo family Italian specialties, along with jazz every night and the world's greatest meatballs. It's the feeling you get at Columbo's. It's easy, friendly, not fawning, and so far away from Beverly Hills prices, it makes for, oh yes, experience. It's easy. And don't we all need a large dose of easy and enjoy? Don't deny yourself and the family. It really is good time central. That's why you have got to get to Columbo's, because it really is that little neighborhood place you wish was down the street from you. Columbo's Munja. Do you want to fly somewhere, anywhere in the world? Smart travelers call MyFlightSearch.com for the best deals on flight tickets. Going to Manila, Bangkok, London, how about Singapore? Call MyFlightSearch.com for the lowest flight tickets available. What about a local vacation? 
Let's say you want to fly to Vegas, Orlando, Miami, Los Angeles, or Denver. Pick up the phone and call MyFlightSearch.com right now. We have exclusive deals that you can't find anywhere else. The only way you can get these low airline prices is by calling us. We have so many low prices available, we can't possibly tell them to you right here and now. If you're flying somewhere anytime in the next six months and you want the lowest airline ticket prices anywhere, you owe it to yourself to save a ton of money. So pick up your cell phone and call MyFlightSearch.com right now. Call 800-445-3166. 800-445-3166. That's 800-445-3166. Call now. 800-445-3166. Hi, everybody. Michael Horn from CRNTalk.com. You know, we provide you with the best in talk radio, eight channels of talk radio, from radio on the left, radio on the right, sports talk, business talk, religious talk, Spanish talk, you name it, we've got talk radio for you. All at CRNTalk.com. Well, now we'll bring you video as well as audio. That's right. Watch your favorite shows like the Robert Conrad Show, the Fred Dreyer Program, What's Cooking Today, What's Cooking on Wine, The Lounge, and so many other shows in video right at our website, crntalk.com. You can also watch us on Roku. Just search CRN Talk, and you can watch us on Roku on any TV anywhere in the world. Also on Facebook Live. Go to facebook.com forward slash CRN Digital Talk. Facebook.com forward slash CRN Digital Talk. Roku, search CRN Talk. Check us out on Tiki Live and at crntalk.com. Video for you talk fans, all from CRN Talk. CRN listeners, when you come to Southern California, stop by a great restaurant, the Dresden Restaurant at 1760 North Vermont Avenue in Hollywood. Enjoy great entertainment, like the music of the legendary Marty and Elaine at the world-famous Dresden Restaurant. The Dresden was a location for the making of the movie Swingers. Now you can swing with stars Marty and Elaine. Plus, enjoy great food, too, like French onion soup, artichoke hearts, and many other great appetizers. Seafood? There's salmon, shrimp scampi, New Zealand orange roughy, halibut, Lake Superior whitefish, and specialties like veal marsala piccata and parmigiana. Plus, we've got a great roast rack of lamb, chicken piccata, and cordon bleu, and pasta dishes, too. Steaks? Filet. New York. Chateaubriand for two. Much more, too, including pork chops, prime rib of beef, and an incredibly extra large cut of prime rib. It's the Dresden Restaurant, open for lunch Monday through Saturday and dinner Monday through Sunday. Check us out at 1760 North Vermont Avenue or call 323-665-4294. And we are back. Richard Nixon live here in the Legal Lounge, CRN Digital Talk Radio, CRNTalk.com. Com. Also, make sure to check out where we're broadcasting on video on Facebook.com slash CRN Talk. Also, all previous uh, sessions of this fine quality broadcast are on YouTube.com. Just search Richard Nixon Live on YouTube or visit the CRN Digital Talk YouTube channel and find the playlist there. So, Richard, uh, one there's an interesting reaction from uh, some of these uh, Mueller reports, uh, specifically one Mitt Romney. Yes. Mr. Mitt Romney, he had some. He said he's never been more disappointed in a president ever before. I know. And then he's absolutely shocked and appalled that there's gambling going on in this establishment. Yes. What are your thoughts on the reaction at large, and specifically with Mitt Romney? Well, again, I, frankly, I don't know what the problem is with Romney and the president. The president helped him become the junior senator of Utah. Yeah. You'd think there'd be some kind of payback and thank you for your help. But instead, he seems to be um, satisfied just being the um, little dog yipping at the president's heels by saying things that just are negative regarding the president. For instance, he mentions, he ignores the fact that the media uh, did so many things that were basically lies against Romney, which caused him to lose the election. And yet he now sides with the establishment. For instance, when he said, I'll never forget when he said, 47% of these people won't vote for me, so I need you guys. He was talking about the existing audience in front of him, and yet the media flipped that around and make, made it sound as though he didn't want those 47% of their vote. He was looking down at them. No, he was simply saying he couldn't count on those. Anyway. Uh, talks about his dog, that he put his dog on the roof of his car and the dog died or suffered or whatever, all, and didn't uh, pay, he didn't pay any income tax. All these falsehoods by the media, and he totally ignores that and goes after Trump. I, I don't get it. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. It's interesting, too, that from a 
people, our brothers and sisters on the left, they came at Romney so hard after the uh, debates in 2012 when Rom Romney, as a candidate Romney, said that Russia is our greatest strategic asset, yes. our strategic ad adversary. And right. He was pretty prescient in that comment, actually, now looking at it. Absolutely. So that's very interesting, too. And let's kind of go back a little bit to the Steele dossier. This is kind of where it all started. And an interesting uh, article came out in the New York Times where the, a lot of the establishment media took the Steele dossier as as fact, as right. as Bible when it first came out. And now even the New York Times, the old gray lady, is backing that, off that, too, as well. Right, Richard? Absolutely. And uh, I think Hannity mentioned the fact that he's been saying this for a long time. The New York Times finally suggested that maybe this uh, dossier, the so-called Steele dossier, was in fact Russian disinformation and really wasn't affected uh, uh, by someone in this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it's very interesting. I think that there's a lot of holes that can be poked in that Steele dossier, and it's amazing that it caught up like wildfire. I mean, it's just, it's an indictment on the media overall because there's salacious almost... Uh, details that were pretty hard to believe to begin with but because the media is where it's at they're there to make money to sell yes. newspapers they just ran with it and now we're here where we are uh real fast though this is a, a very precedent issue that's happening as we speak right now is that the supreme court is hearing a case right now about a census question that's going to appear on the 2020 census it's a question regarding citizenship this is a question that was on the census before i believe up until the early 70s when it was replaced but the question is as follows are you a u.s citizen yes no and it should be noted that the united states census bureau is forbidden by law from sharing the answers to that question yes. to any other agency beyond the census department itself richard what's your thought on this case overall well again i i can't buy their explanation for why that question should not be answered uh first of all we know that the number of people in this country th th those numbers are used for two reasons it's congressional seats how they're allocated and where the hundreds of billions of dollars of federal money are spent and sent to the different states. Now, it seems to me that we, the people, uh, if we ignore the government for a minute, we, the people, the citizens of this country, have every right to know who is in this country that is either citizens or non-citizens. And if some of the money is going to be used to go to non-citizens, why? Why do, why should a state use their non-citizens as some kind of um, estimate as to how much money they should receive from the federal government. It seems to me that only citizens are required or entitled to money from the federal government. Second, the number of representatives that go to Congress are also a function of the number. Now, do we think that the Founding Fathers intended that we count non-citizens when it comes to uh, the representatives in Congress? and? in the electoral college that's where the electoral college number comes from the number of representatives does anybody think that we should count non-citizens in that number i think not well the uh, the argument uh, against this just to play devil's advocate is that they say if you by asking this question yes. you're actually going to suppress the uh, turnout you're not going to get people who won't answer the question therefore you want to have accurate representation of the populace of that particular district well what i find very interesting about that is the aclu has already said that they have census bureau analysis that shows that they know how many people don't answer so what's the point in other words if they say that 5% of the population won't answer, then don't we know the answer then? In other words, if they don't answer and we add the 5%, then we've got the true number. So, again, the idea that someone will not answer, that is, will avoid the truth, to me, from the beginning, that's a loser. Mm -hmm. I believe I'm, I'm not the most pure person in the world but i think we should strive toward truth yes and shouldn't we don't we don't the citizens of this country have a right to know how many people are here as citizens versus non-citizens putting aside whether they're here legally or illegally the issue is simply citizenship and i think the people of this country have a right to know that and you know i who i think this does a great disservice to not only to the districts itself that don't re uh, receive represent uh, 
proportional representation is it seems to me that a lot of people on the left, ACLU and all those groups, are painting immigrants as all as one brush, all as undocumented. Whereas I think it does a big disservice to the actual to legal immigrants. Yes. I mean, because, yeah, I mean, yeah, they could answer, I know I'm not a citizen, but I have a green card. But yeah, they're still in this country legally. Of course. They were in line. They waited in line. Now they are members of the society and they should be counted. And we know that from history that that question was acceptable from 1890 to 1950. Now, what happened in 1950 that suddenly made that uh, objectionable? I, I have no idea. That's something our crack research team needs to look into. We'll be right back, you guys, right after the break. We're going to talk a little foreign policy after this break vis-a-vis -vis Cuba and Venezuela. A very dangerous situation going on down there. We're going to talk about that. So stay with us, you guys. We're here in the Legal Lounge. Richard Nixon Live, CRN Digital Talk Radio, CRNTalk.com. Com. Questions, comments, or concerns, drop us a note on Facebook or uh, shoot Richard an email at richardnixon at crntalk.com. Follow him on Twitter at Richard A. Nixon. Be right back. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS? News flash, the president has changed the tax laws. And now, you may be able to pay the IRS less. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, the tax doctor can help you pay the IRS as little as possible allowed by law. There are new tax laws for business owners, the self-employed, even W-2 workers. If you have a back tax problem or a few years of unfilled returns, new help to save you money is now here. Call right now to see how the new tax Tax laws can help you. Plus, right now, we'll waive the consultation fee and give you a free tax savings report. Attention business owners, the self-employed, and W-2 workers. Make this free call to the tax doctor now and learn how to take advantage of the new tax laws that may help you pay the IRS less. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. That's 800-985-1610. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12-hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live agent help, you can always get fast help and fast answers. So on your next trip, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, how about right now? Pick up your phone and call SmartFares. Plus, save up to 75% on your plane reservation. So call right now. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. Eight hundred nine one five twenty six forty four. And we are back here in the Legal Lounge, Siren Digital Talk Radio, SirenTalk.com. And so uh, we're talking about the citizenship question on the uh, United States twenty twenty sentence is a census that is. And just uh, some breaking news here, saying that uh, court observers, just based on the lines of questioning from the justices, say that the conservative justices will, in fact, uh, take the majority in this particular case and allow uh, William uh, allow Secretary of Commerce William Wilbur Ross, who oversees the U.S. Census Bureau, uh, to allow to change that particular question. So, Richard, looks like this is going to happen. And why are Democrats so upset about this? What's the real reason they want this uh, this question omitted from the Well, census? the real reason almost everything recently comes down to politics. Uh, as we said earlier, the Democrats are in trouble in terms of generating new Democrats. And they're looking in the prisons. They're looking for 16-year-olds and hoping that those people are young enough to be shaped to believe that they can get freebies and no one has to pay for them. And this is just one more, I would say, act of desperation by the Democrats because, again, uh, I, I think they, they're interested in the maximum number of dollars that come to their state, and that money can be used to further their uh, different enclaves, uh, protecting the illegals or at least the non-citizens, and I think that clearly answers the question. And again, we've said it before, but it seems to me that the citizens have a right to know 
who is in this country, whether they're citizens or not, and especially the Electoral College should not be affected by people who are here who are not citizens. Well, there you have it, folks. So we'll be monitoring this moving forward. And so speaking of, we want to talk a little bit about a very, very tragic situation that's going on down in Venezuela right now that's reminiscent of a different time, a time uh, where things were a little bit more dangerous with the Cold War. And what's happening now, Cuba. Cuba is a very repressive regime. Uh, even after uh, the, the passing of Fidel Castro, his brother Raul took over. So it's still a Castro-communist authoritative regime. And uh, right now, what's happening in Venezuela, everybody knows that Venezuela has been having terrible, terrible times since uh, the Maduro regimes came to power. It's a kleptocracy, it's a corrupt, it's a narco state. And now we're seeing over 15,000, 15,000 to 20,000, according to the Foreign Policy magazine, of Cuban troops and intelligence advisors in Venezuela. Richard, this is dangerous. Well, I think it is, and again, uh, I would correct you on one thing. Uh, President Kennedy pronounced it Cuba, ah, not Cuba. Yeah. So Excuse in me. any Shut event, up. what uh, President Trump is doing, it was, came as a surprise to me and many others, is that he's approved a move intended to further choke off foreign investment in Cuba by lifting long-standing limits on U.S. citizens seeking to sue over property confiscated, that's a polite word, a euphemism for having stolen uh, by the Havana government going back to Fidel Castro's revolution six decades ago. Now, Trump has basically said that we can, that is, these people whose property was stolen by Fidel Castro and, and his people, we can now sue them for that money, for that property back. And it's got a lot of people upset because the Europeans and others deal with Cuba and they may have countersuits against the Americans. So it's created chaos, but I think it's worthy of President Trump to keep going forward. What I find interesting is that Cuba has 20,000 troops in Venezuela. Yeah. Now, to what extent the Monroe Doctrine gets kicked in there, I'm certainly not an expert on that. Um, to what extent we can argue that that's interfering with our commitment under the Monroe Doctrine, and therefore take action to, I would like to see, frankly, I would like to see Cuba freed and that the people of Cuba release their political prisoners and be given the right to vote. Mm -hmm. uh, those things have been denied those people since the 60s and it's a shame that we permit that to happen 90 miles from Florida. Yeah, it's a dangerous situation. I mean, we and what you're talking about, about, about uh, suing for uh, reclamation of lost property, I mean, we're not talking about pocket change here. We're talking about billions of dollars. Of course, yes. When Castro came to power in 1959, overthrowing the Batista regime, they nationalized a, 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 just a wealth of, of American in, in, interests, including United Fruit Company, including Bacardi Rum. All sorts of companies confiscated their assets and kicked them out of, out of Cuba. And yes. so if we can sue to recoup some of that money, I mean, I think that's the right thing to do. I do, too. Even if it turns out the mafia makes a few bucks on the deal, I'd like to see it go forward. Yeah, I think we have some of some friends at CRN that might benefit of that as well. <laughs> and like you said about the Monroe Doctrine, I mean, this is, a, this is a, a longstanding adversary, Cuba, a communist regime and a repressive regime, and like you said, still jails and tortures political dissidents, now fermenting further uh, communist regimes in Venezuela. This seems like this is a no-brainer here. Yes, and I understood that Cuba was in desperate uh, straits, that they needed money. Uh, where, how they can afford to send 20,000 troops to Venezuela is beyond me. But what I found also, also interesting is uh, Cuba's response to Mr. Trump's uh, actions, or uh, proposed actions, uh, is very briefly, Cuba strongly, firmly, and categorically rejects such a threat which is construed as an extremely arrogant and irresponsible hostile action and repudiates the disrespectful and slanderous language used in the public announcement made by the State Department. I find it amazing that Cuba, after stealing this property from others, now has basically saying they're in the right 
and for you to dare to try to take that property back is somehow demeaning to them. Especially after we've pretty much single-handedly let them back into the world marketplace. After Absolutely. the Obama administration, some yes. say stupidly, some say smartly, uh, relieved sanctions. And so it's very, very interesting. We'll be following the story as well moving forward. Stick around. Coming back to wrap things up, Richard's got a special message for the president right after the break. So stick around here. We're in the legal lounge. Richard Nixon live on CRN Digital Talk Radio, crntalk.com, facebook.com slash CRN Talk. If Ernest Hemingway was alive today, would he say this to you? Shakespeare, Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, all great writers. And after reading your book, I simply must add you to the list. Wait, you don't have a book yet. So make a free call to Page Publishing. Their expert staff can help you turn your book idea into a real book, a masterpiece that could someday make the bestseller list in hard copy and digitally all across the world. Page Publishing can help you completely take your idea for a book, write it, and publish it. So if you want to join the ranks of some of the most famous authors in the world, call now for a free information kit. Turn your book idea into publishing gold. Make a free call right now to Page Publishing. 800-378-3212. 800-378-3212. That's 800-378-3212. Hi, this is Ron Seggi inviting you to join me for The Tonight Show of Radio every Saturday night, 9 to 11 Pacific Standard Time on CRN Digital Talk Radio. Now in our 24th year and well over 19,000 guests, The Ron Seggi Show Live originates from our Universal Radio Studios. Celebrities from TV, music, movies, literature, politics, and show business, at one time or another, they all come to The Ron Seggi Show. So why don't you? We are the debt destroyer. Any debt you have, credit card, tax, student loan debt. Call now to get our free report that tells you how to destroy your debt. It's a great resource. Plus, when you make this free call right now, we'll have a debt destroyer expert ready to help you. They can show you how they can help you destroy your debt and get your life back on track. Debt problems don't have to be overwhelming. You can live stress-free and debt-free. Credit cards, medical bills, IRS tax problems, even student loan debt. Learn about free programs offered by the credit card companies, hospitals, and even the government that can help you slash your debt. Call right now for free information, including our Debt Destroyer Guide, a $300 value, yours free. Call right now. 800-515-6348. 800-515-6348. That's 800-515-6348. Trying to sell your old car? Instead, donate your vehicle to Heritage for the Blind. Pickup is free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats, whether they run or not. Call right now and receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call 1-800-785-9618. Donate your car today. That's 1-800-785-9618. And we are back. Richard Nixon live here on CRN Digital Talk Radio, crntalk.com, facebook.com slash CRN Talk. And like I said, all previous episodes are available on podcast as well. CRN Talk slash podcaster slash Nixon or available on YouTube, just youtube.com. Search the CRN Digital Talk channel and find Richard's playlist there as well. And so, Richard, we were talking just right now during the break that this administration has been wrought with, uh, with interference, some might say. So interference from obstructionist Democrats, interference from obstructionist never-Trump Republicans, and uh, interference from, uh, from investigation. And uh, we were both talking uh, about a, a tremendous radio show host uh, syndicated on CRN here as well, uh, Mr. Mark Levin. And he was saying that imagine what the president could accomplish if he wasn't hindered and hampered by all this intransigence. And that includes his, his international relations with other countries. 
He's been able to marshal more money for the United Nations than ever before. He's gotten those people to kick in uh, their fair share. Uh, he's done more in North Korea, I think, than anyone has done. He's not giving up. Uh, he's standing pat. He's not yielding like other presidents have done. And there's a long list of his accomplishments in terms of the tax cuts, the redu re reduction in regulations, and so on. Uh, the more people working today than ever in our history, 170 million. I, I can't only imagine what he could have done had he not had all this false information. Uh, the media constantly every day saying he's a traitor. He sold out to the Russians without any evidence. It's unbelievable that the media would, would do this to begin with. And this is why I say kudos to Mark Levin, who was on Fox the other night, he has a show on Saturday nights. And after he listed a bunch of the accomplishments, which I attempted to do there, that Mr. Trump had done in spite of all the negativity, he said, tens of millions of people voted for you, Mr. Trump. And we're hanging in there. Don't give up. We've got your back. And I, I second that motion. Mm -hmm. I mean, because this is a man that doesn't necessarily need to be president. I Absolutely. Mean, he's a billionaire, and he's just getting getting hit from every side. And, and so do you think that maybe every once in a while he, he thinks to himself, well, why am I doing here? Why am I taking all this? You know, I, I'm ambivalent. I vacillate on that question. There's been times when I said, I think he's going to quit. I wouldn't put up with it. <laughs> yeah. But now I, I'm getting to know, I think, his, his mind a little bit better. And I'm thinking he's committed to doing something that he knows is right and he doesn't care uh, he can fight you back he's more than man enough to fight back and he'll take whatever you put out especially now that somebody like Mueller who was had all these if you will liberals arraigned against the Trump all the lawyers were either Hillary supporters or Democrats and they still gave him a clean bill of health so to speak given that kind of if you will fairness I think he sees that uh, he could eventually win this thing, and he's going to hang in there. I've often been somewhat critical uh, towards President Trump vis-a-vis -vis his comportment, but now I, I'm coming to understand, A, that it's a key to success because it makes him unique. But B, also, I mean, one of the ways you have to fight fire is with fire. And so when he uses his Twitter to really you know, go after people, Absolutely. I mean, sometimes that feels like it's warranted, especially in today's age of mass communications and quick sound bites. <laughs> Yes, I, and I think those people who kept telling him, stop Twittering or tweeting so much, I think they, they're mis, misinforming the president. But one thing, before we leave the uh, Mueller investigation, I wanted to say something that I think is important, and that is that a prosecutor does not exonerate. In other words, uh, the prosecution, the Mueller investigation should have included nothing against Trump unless they were going to go after him and, and prosecute him for that offense. Now, there you go. All we are is seeking the truth, and that's all that we ever want to do here in the Legal Lounge with Richard Nixon. Richard, until next week. Thank you very much. All right. My CRN, pleasure. CRN Digital Talk Radio, CRNTalk.com, American Illusion of Freedom, and buy it on Amazon.com. And hello to Valerie again. Yeah, thank you, Val. We appreciate all of our listeners, all of our podcasters, and everybody on Facebook. See you guys next week.